Hey folks, welcome to lecture one and a half for advanced linear algebra. So today we're going to be talking about complex numbers. And the reason why it's just sort of a, a mini half lecture is because we're not going to go into any great depth. You don't need to know much about complex numbers in, uh, for this course, but you do need to know a little bit, basically just how to add and multiply them and sort of how we think about them geometrically. Once you get that down, then you'll have enough for this course. And if you've already taken complex analysis, you'll already have all of this and a whole lot more. But, you know, just in case, let's go through a sort of quick one-page summary of what you need to know about complex numbers. Um, so the idea is, uh, remember, for a vector space, you have this underlying uh, thing that we call the field, okay? You have this underlying set of numbers that you're working over, okay? And usually that's either the real numbers or the complex numbers. And the complex numbers, what they are, is they get, they're what you get if you take the real numbers and you sort of add a little bit extra to them. In particular, they're what you get if you add another number to them with a property that when you square it, you get minus one, okay? So we're gonna append this extra number that we call i here, and i has the property that i squared equals minus one. Okay, and certainly there's no real number with that property, so it really gives us something new. Okay, and what types of properties do you get when you add this new thing uh, to the set of numbers? Okay, well, first off, any number that's a real scalar multiple of i, we're gonna call that an imaginary number. And don't focus on the name, it's a name from a long, long time ago that's stuck. I mean, they're just as real as real numbers, okay, but they're called imaginary numbers. Okay, and if you take a real number and you add it to an imaginary number, you get something that we call a complex number, okay? A complex number, in other words, it's just any real number plus any imaginary number, okay? And of course we, well, maybe not of course, but this, this first part here, we call that the real part, the A there, and the B, so the, the scalar multiple of I there, we call that the imaginary part of the complex number. Okay. And it turns out that, well, like we, we want complex numbers really to be an extension of real, the real numbers. So arithmetic works with them the exact same way that it works just based on how arithmetic works with real numbers. For example, if you want to add two complex numbers, so some a plus bi plus c plus di, well, you just add the real parts, a plus c, and you add the imaginary parts, b plus d, to get the new real and imaginary parts. Okay, so um, in other words, you can just regroup parentheses just like you could as if these were all real numbers. So hopefully nothing too surprising there. And similarly, if you want to multiply two complex numbers together, all you do is you multiply each term together, right? If you have a plus bi times c plus di, if you never knew what i was, if you just assumed it was a real number, what you would do is you do a times c plus a times di plus bi times c plus bi times di, and that is all that you do. So you get an ac term, uh, two cross terms, and then this little term over here is maybe the tricky one, but I mean, it's just because bi times di, well, that's b times d times i squared. There's two i's there, and i squared is minus one. Remember, that's the point of i squared. And then again, you just regroup parentheses. Usually when we write complex numbers down, we like to group the real part together and the imaginary part together. So it's just, you get this as your real part and all of this times i coming from the cross term there. Okay, so that's how you, you multiply complex numbers together. It's not like you have to remember this formula or anything like that. You just multiply them as you norm, as you would multiply them if they were real numbers, okay? So using, I don't know, if, you, if you're used to the FOIL acronym, I mean, that's all you're doing. Okay, you're multiplying the four pieces together. All right, and just like we usually think about the real numbers as a line, well, we think about the complex numbers as a plane. So in other words, it's sort of a way of, of, of extending a one-dimensional set of numbers, the real numbers, to a two-dimensional set of numbers, which is the complex numbers. And you can really sort of see that they're two-dimensional because there's sort of two quantities needed to specify a complex number here, right? There's a real part and there's um, an imaginary part. And we really think of them as sort of perpendicular to each other. So we think of there being, you know, this real axis here and this imaginary axis here. And to plot a complex number, what you do is, well, if the complex number is a plus bi, you just go over a distance of a in the real direction and b in the imaginary direction. So you, in other words, you just plot it at the coordinate a comma b, right? Where a is like your x coordinate and b is like your y coordinate. Okay, and okay, so all of that is hopefully not too crazy. And then there are just a couple other um, notions uh, about complex numbers that are useful that don't quite have the same analog with real numbers uh, that, that we're quite used to. Okay, so the length or magnitude of a complex number, it's how far that complex number is away from zero. So I guess this does have an analog. It's the, the analog is just the absolute value, right? How far is that number away from zero? Okay, so here I've drawn it on the picture here. That number there, the length of this green line here, that's the length or magnitude of, of the complex number. And the way that you calculate it is it's just 
a squared plus b squared, all square rooted, right? It's just the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and so I mean, if your if your complex number happens to be real, then this length or magnitude really is just the absolute value. Okay, but it, it also works for complex numbers not on the real axis. All right, and then well, one one property that really doesn't have any analog with real numbers is called the complex conjugate. And what it is is well, we denote it with this funky overline here. And what it is is well, you just swap the sign of the imaginary part from positive to negative, or well, if it was negative, then you switch back to positive. You swap the sign of the imaginary part, but leave the real part alone, okay? So geometrically, all this is, is it's taking the complex number and reflecting it in the real axis, okay? So the complex conjugate of a plus bi, well, it's this number down here at a minus bi, okay? And the complex conjugate of a minus bi, again, you reflect it through the x-axis, it would be back up at a plus bi. Okay, so it's just sort of this reflection. And the complex conjugate of the complex conjugate just brings you back to where you started. All right, and the reason that we introduce the complex conjugate at all is just because we can express lots of other interesting operations in terms of it. Okay, so for example, if you, you can just check that if you take a number and multiply by its own complex conjugate, well, just work through the algebra here and it turns out you get the length of that complex conjugate squared. You get its magnitude squared, okay? And similarly, uh, this actually, the, the reason that this is important is because it gives us a way to divide by complex numbers, okay? So if we have a plus bi and we want to divide by c plus di, well, I mean, I want to get that into some expression where I have real part plus imaginary part. And the way that I can get into that form is I can rearrange this so that I'm just dividing by a real number. And the way to do that is just multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by the complex conjugate of the bottom, right? Because I just showed that a number times its own complex conjugate is a real number, right? The length or magnitude of a complex number is always real. It's just a length. It's, it's actually positive and real, okay? So once I multiply and divide by c minus di, then I know this denominator here, it's gonna be real. In particular, it's gonna be c, plus, c squared plus d squared, okay? And then I can split it into two fractions. Then I've just got, hey, this is the real part. This is why I get when I, the ac plus bd, that's why I get when I multiply this top part and then this real part on the bottom as well. And the, the cross term of the product on top is this funky guy here and still just c squared plus d squared on the bottom. Okay, so it gives us a way to divide by complex numbers. It gives us a way to extract the real and imaginary parts of that division. All right, so that's all you need to know about complex numbers. They won't sort of be a constant theme throughout this course, but they will come up from, you know, from time to time. So it's, it's good to be comfortable with multiplying and adding them and basic things like that. All right, so I will see you all in lecture two. Have a good one.